everybody. It's our Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well, having a good weekend. And I'm going to guess as far as the weather's concerned, most of you don't have complaints unless you're over towards Florida right now. Had a tornado report over here towards the Keys. And of course, there's a big sporting event in Daytona Beach, the Daytona 500, which has been rained out and postponed until tomorrow. So some people are probably upset about that, myself included, because I actually am a NASCAR fan too. So bummer for a lot of us here. But between that and uh, what's going on over here towards the Great Lakes, which we have some lake effect snow, and then also over here towards the west where we have that atmospheric river continuing to bring more rain and snow depending on your elevation. So that being said, it's a pretty uh, quiet start to Sunday. May not end out that way though. But that being said though, We'll be uh, looking ahead to what's next for the rest of this time frame through the month of February and also get a look at March too, at least the early part of it. So make sure you hit that like button. Also uh, leave a comment and if you're new around here, you're seeing this channel for the first time, especially hit that subscribe button if you would. That being said, let's go ahead and get into things here. So starting out with our uh, marginal risk over here, there is still an isolated chance of a damaging wind gust or tornado over here towards Miami. There are currently no watches or warnings in effect, but that threat is going to linger into the afternoon and maybe into the evening as well. It's not going to be a long duration event. You may just get really get one storm that might be a little bit above the rest, but won't be anything magnanimous. I would like to think at the very least. Mother Nature can be full of surprises. It's like this is a little bit of a surprise here. Seeing a slight risk in uh, Sacramento in particular. It's not impossible to get these to happen, but what the slight risk is for is what kind of intrigues me a little bit. It's a 5% tornado threat. None of the hazards are at slight risk criteria except for the tornado threat. I think this will have a large part to will be set up in large part due to the fact that we have the mountains over here towards the east and with that atmospheric river slamming towards that um towards the very edge of those mountains here the thinking is probably that we can get just enough spin to work its way into the valleys over here so we'll have to be on guard over here towards sacramento make sure you are practicing your tornado safety precautions here I don't think this will be a widespread event or an outbreak or anything of that kind, but you never know for one. And then two, like I said, it's not very often they issue a 5% over here. So it could come as a little bit of a shock here. We'll get into the details of, of that setup a little bit later. And then also to kind of close things out as far as the three day period is concerned, at least with the following day, we'll have less of a severe threat but the rain threat will continue into that day and then really even into day four beyond that point for that region from that point the severe weather threat as a whole kind of tapers off here as well as the winter threat as we're going to be setting up for a uh, calmer period until we get to day five where the severe weather threat may return and this is going to be mainly over towards maybe the ohio valleys and the eastern half of the ozarks here maybe the western half of dixie alley as well this is mainly prevalent through Thursdays and Friday, Thursday and Friday, which is day five and day six here. After that point, the weather takes a calmer turn after that. So looking at our model data here, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our wind profiles. We're mainly going to be looking at the Euro and the GFS with this one. No convective models because we aren't in range of everything yet. We'll get into further detail tomorrow with tomorrow's severe threat and then going beyond that point so we'll start out with the euro and here's that atmospheric river that we were talking about right here and then here's our little troublemaker here out towards the southeast causing shower and storm activity towards florida it's really going to be towards what i would say the mid-morning maybe early afternoon areas for the west where we have that storm potential and maybe even a tornado threat it's not going to be a, a major threat here like literally if we were to just click any random spot right here it's not really showing incredible parameters in fact on this one the hazard type is nothing 
but if I were to go a little bit further to the north here or maybe go back a time frame here then you would see a marginal severe threat here so like I said it's not really looking like a uh, long duration event at all and even then with this setup it's not a textbook severe set setup you don't have the loaded gun look or anything of that sort you don't have a lot of instability but you have just enough to get something going here you have a little bit of low level spin and even then towards the higher levels it's not like the uh, kinematics are incredible either but those mountains are always a wild card they were wild card last year because we ended up seeing a lot of severe weather over towards new mexico and western texas and i remember streaming there a lot so this could be one of those cases over here towards sacramento once again so don't let your guard down just because the parameters aren't incredible so that being said once that storm system moves out we start to see some ridging out ahead of it which is usually a bit of a red flag for maybe another severe setup trying to form albeit this one isn't super impressive there's some deep decent amplitude with the short wave however i will say that the trough is not that impressive so this could overall try to limit some of the severe threat the uh really the key factors with this one will be the moisture uh, uh, that'll be out ahead of this in the days ahead so for Thursday and Friday I think that's going to be the key to everything whether this ends up producing severe weather or just ends up being a rainmaker at best after that point though this storm system will clear out and then we'll see more ridging occur out ahead of this big guy this one right here I'm a little bit more concerned about and it's going to be right towards the end of the month and with the ridge like this coming into play and seeing pressure readings like this, this is gonna this is kind of indicating that we're gonna have much warmer temperatures for this setup at the surface. And usually with warmer surface temperatures, you get some decent forcing like what you're seeing here, good Gulf of Mexico moisture flow. That could be a sign of trouble here. I'm not guaranteeing it, especially with the time frame that we're looking at over 200 hours out. It can easily change. I've seen plenty of stuff changed within the last couple of weeks here so keeping an eye on it but definitely going to be watching this more and more you might see some update videos on this very soon but if this trend continues we could see a more notable severe event right around the end of february maybe even to start out march and this is also showing on the gfs as well like i said we're seeing pretty much a similar signal across the board over the next couple of days here Here's that uh, storm system that we'll be watching over towards the uh, Dixie Alley region, towards the eastern Ozarks. And then after that, here's that ridge once again. And then one thing to note with the GFS is that this storm system is actually a little bit stronger, but it also evolves earlier. So there could be a chance here we may even see a little bit of uh, severe activity over towards the southern plains possibly. Maybe even towards the Midwest as well. And then eventually even the southeast and then also as this continues to dig here this kind of has the look of becoming a major winter storm as well so we could be watching a really dynamic setup here if this ends up verifying of course like i said we're over 10 days out at this point so a lot of uncertainty still exists with it but after that point we do look like we start to see a big pattern change over here we're starting to warm up notably out west with this ridge in play and then towards the southeast this trough is going to dig a little bit and then as we continue to go forward here right towards the end of the model time frame here we almost see to have like this little bit of a mini omega block that's going to occur for a bit here i don't see this lasting for very long and what i'm most concerned with is that eventually towards the end of this we could end up setting the stage for an even bigger severe event of course like i said 16 days out doesn't give me a lot of ground to stand on. These are just more or less kind of hypothesis and thoughts that I have more so than anything else, but definitely a couple of things that have caught my eye to say the least here. So now we're going to go ahead and see how this affects what the weather could look like over the course of the next few days and beyond. Here we are looking at the uh, precipitation type here. You can see what's going on out west first, and then eventually this low here is going to be our culprit for severe weather still thinking over towards eastern Dix eastern uh, ozarks western dixie alley could be the point of interest then after that i'm still kind of questioning what could happen with this upcoming storm system at the end of the month here but this is just a quick look at what we could see here 
and we'll also take a look at how that's going to affect what our temperatures will be like in the days ahead as well but this is what the euro is showing us we go to the gfs it's pretty much a similar deal although there may be some variance in the intensity of some of these storm systems here main thing you want to look for these low pressure areas represented by that red l with the number on top of it so like i said for the most part unless you're over towards maine nothing really to worry about on the wintry side of things but really it's going to be severe weather that ends up taking over this taking over the uh headlines in the uh days ahead here and even the weeks to follow from the looks of it and here is that other storm system passing through and here comes that big storm system that i'm extra interested in and you can see how that wintry weather wraps around the uh western side of that and get that good wraparound moisture from the uh subtropical jet here as well so next thing we'll do is go ahead and take a look at our temperatures here like i said i think the gfs is going to be a little bit more extreme with the temperatures here euro might be a little bit more conservative with this run but even so, we do get a couple more cold blasts out here towards the east, especially once we get that trough digging in towards the end of the run, especially once we go over to GFS. But you can see with that ridging, we do warm up pretty notably over here, getting into the 60s and 70s, into even Oklahoma and Kansas over here, even seeing a few 80s in Texas. And then even having a lot of that spread over towards the southeast and even maybe even the mid-Atlantic. Of course, towards the beginning of the run, we're looking pretty chilly. But as time goes on here, you can see how that cold air is starting to retreat notably. So we might be seeing this season shift early. We'll see if Poxitani feels right. But we'll go ahead and shift over to the GFS. And the GFS is one that's kind of working against Poxitani Phil in the long run here. I mean, truthfully, I feel like that's somewhat of a myth, but I do find it interesting myself since I was a weather nerd from from toddlerhood really but either way here you can see that ridging once again and then eventually that cold air wanting to take a little dive to the south here especially as we get towards the back half of this run look at how far those 80s stretch up we're literally even sneaking into oklahoma here you can see that big storm system dragging that cold air in and eventually that does try to make its way to the south by the end of this run here could have a couple of chilly days to start out the month of March over here towards the east. But eventually, I do think that ridge and that omega block is going to come into play. And then eventually, we'll see that block move maybe towards mid-month. And we could be looking at more severe weather here. So like I said, a lot of moving parts here. A lot of things are going to be changing. So this could also be attack to some people's immune system. So make sure you're doing what you can to take care of yourself here. The uh, transition from warm to cold here could be abrupt for some of us. So just uh, just keep an eye on yourself, especially since we might be heading into an early uh, allergy season as well for some of you that do suffer through it. Last thing we'll look at here is the uh, outlooks for rainfall and winter weather. And we'll go on from there. And you can even see with today, we have a uh, moderate risk for excessive rainfall, aka flash flooding, mainly going to be over towards the Santa Maria region and the uh also the los padres national forest area so definitely be on the lookout for uh changing conditions over here and don't drive through flooded roadways santa barbara you're also in there as well so we continue to go forward here we're gonna see that threat persist into tomorrow while albeit that area is a little bit smaller there is a chance that this could be moved up towards the north or towards the south wouldn't be surprised to see a slight movement up towards the north here with the uh, moderate risk but fact in the matter is even with that slight risk you do need to be a little bit more on guard with the uh, flooded roadways and just flooding conditions in general we go towards day three we still see that slight risk in effect and there's still room for it to be upgraded and things don't really calm down until day four where we have that marginal risk only down towards the south now and eventually that day five threat shifts over towards the Ohio Valley over here eventually also we have the uh, winter threat to worry about and for the most part over towards this region it's really going to be the upper uh, peaks of the Sierra Nevadas beyond that point not really much of anything to talk about you can see that signal begin to diminish over time especially as we get into the three-day period and then after that 
we don't really see too much of a signal here for winter weather not until we get towards the back half and that's going to be really more so over towards northern new england and then eventually over towards maine and that signal does somewhat increase as we get towards the back half of this uh, time frame here we're basically just looking up to about a week out at maximum and like i said it's still not a high signal yet but keep in mind we're looking pretty far out and to see a 10 percent uh, signals pretty decent i would say for these re for this region here not uncommon for this region but definitely something that will pique some of our interest over here towards northern maine more snowfall for them is it's pretty much just another day for a lot of those guys especially over towards mount washington in particular where the strongest non-tornadic or non-storm wind speed it was recorded there over 200 miles an hour which is pretty crazy but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed me nerding out here and giving the forecast here as to what's ahead keep in mind this is prone to changing so update videos will be coming but that's all I got for you guys. Again, if you appreciated anything in the video here, you made it to the end especially, leave a like and a comment. Definitely would appreciate it. Let me know I'm doing all right. And then also, uh, if you're new around here, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button too. Also, make sure you get that bell on to be notified of whenever I post or go live. That being said, I will see you guys tomorrow. Till then, it's been Tyler Metalhead Weatherman. Take care and have a good rest of your Sunday.